Hi, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about some using some ink tense pencils. Uh, many of you will know about the ink tense pencils and maybe some of you haven't seen them yet. They're an artist type pencil, you can get them at art supply shops. They look a lot like a pencil, like a coloured pencil. They behave like a watercolour pencil because you can add water to them. But in actual fact they're very well named. They are actually ink instead of um, a regular pencil in them so that when you add water it comes back to being an ink and therefore when you put it onto fabric it becomes permanent. So how fun is that? Not a lot of fun if you've got it where you don't want it but it's really fun otherwise. So and also the name being ink tense they're also quite intense again because it's an ink it's not a regular watercolour pencil. If you wanted to do some colouring on fabric with watercolour pencils you can but it won't be permanent or you may need to use a a different medium, you can get textile mediums, you can use an aloe vera gel, there's lots of things you can do but I'm just going to show you how to use the pencils today on some fabric just with water and when it dries it is permanent. So this is what we're doing. I have um, a project that I've been working on this year, some of you will know about the Skitcher Day, I've got um, some of it sitting up behind me here where we're doing a little sketchy design and then we're colouring in and doing some shading and creating uh, just a little bit more depth to the design other than just the fabric applique. The fabric applique is great, but what's wrong with a little bit of shading and extra little um, bits and pieces here and there. So I've got the Inktense pencils. Now the other thing, because um, they're not a particularly um, inexpensive pencil, so you may find that you don't want, you can get a large set. I find I've been using the 12 for most things. I don't often need anything more than that. Um, you can get 24 sets, you can get 72 colours. Um, because they're a little bit uh, pricey and you don't want to really waste them, if you need to sharpen them at any stage, and you will at times, you can keep the little shavings of the ink and you can splatter them on fabric and things or you can use it in a little palette like a water paint, watercolour paint. There's lots of things and ways of using things so you don't really have to waste anything, which is another nice little thing about them. So. Because I've been doing this little sketch, this is a little picture for each day of the year that we're doing this year. I thought I just, I've just done some more stitching on here. I haven't done any shading on these yet. So these first few along this row here have um, had their shading where I thought it was necessary. It doesn't always need anything. But the idea of the sketch day was that we were doing a sketchy sort of applique and using ink tense pencils. So I thought I'd just share a little bit of that um, with you. So in my little honeycomb here, it was just a yellow, so I've added a little sort of darker orangey shading. I've coloured in the B, so it's really handy when you've got just little tiny areas. One thing you do have to know is that you can't put lighter colours onto a darker fabric. If you put yellow onto some black or dark brown or dark red, it isn't going to show up because they're transparent, like an ink. So you need to allow for that sort of thing. So you can go darker, but it's not easy to go lighter. So sometimes you find you may not have a fabric the colour you want at all and you've got something that's very light. Well that's a great idea because then you can completely colour that into the colour that you want it to be uh, rather than having to sort of have little bits and pieces of colour that you don't want. So I thought I'd show you how to do some of that here. Um, it's not hard. The, the things I find I need are the pencils. I use a water brush. It's uh, it's a brush that's filled with water in the handle and I've got another one here that's actually got water in it so I might grab that one. The handle unscrews, you can fill it up from the tap with water which is a very convenient thing, they're great for travelling because they're easy, you don't need a water bottle or anything as well. And it's just got a little brush head on it like a paintbrush and you can get them in different thicknesses um, different sizes, you can get flat brushes, you can get fine point ones. Um, so I've got that one there, the, the bristles do get a little bit coloured after a while but it's still going to be clear. And then the other thing I have is a tissue or piece of paper towel because you just want to be able to wipe it away. So you don't want to be squeezing it so that loads and loads of water comes through. It, once it starts coming through it'll just keep feeding itself quite nicely. So that's handy to have just in case you might need to blot something. There's lots of little things that we have to do in life. So I thought maybe I'd colour in something like I've, I've done a little flower head here. 
and it's very bland at the moment and this would be a good one to show you I might make it a little bit um, with some little orange tips so because it's an, an in, intense sort of colour you won't need a lot I'm just going to put some little orange tips on the top of these petals here and then when I add a little bit of water because that's so that's not very strong at the moment but as soon as you add the water you can see that colour really starts to come through it is going to dry a little bit lighter than that however that's pretty good so now if it's a little bit wet or even if it's not you may want to have your iron handy and just pop the iron on that to dry that what I found with the iron is it stops it running because it will run if it's a little bit too wet it will you know, go right into other fabric but the iron also just helps it blend nicely so you get a nice little blended look so I think that's quite cute but I think that the flower needs a little bit more and it's probably going to come up from the bottom now and this is a sort of a pinky sort of colour often seen in flowers and this little bowl at the bottom is probably quite dark so same thing now I'm going to come back so just a little bit of colour it's easier to come back and add more colour rather than try and make it a full colour thing all in one go this is quite a strong colour but that will just blend through quite nicely you can see that I'm not having loads and loads of water coming through or anything like that it's just and that's just going to blend up into those little petals there nicely so again I'll come back with the iron and you can see that that's that's got a lovely sort of shaded look to it now so nothing terribly hard about this these little petals in here they're going to need a little bit of this as well so a little bit more of the orange just at the top there makes it look like you're awfully clever and artistic when it's really just a fairly easy little technique just that does require a little bit of practice I suggest that you practice on something that isn't your final piece of work the first time I'm just going to put a little bit of shading on the leaf as well just to give it a little bit more depth I'm just going to come on one side a little bit there let that just blend through a little bit I'm working on batik cloth and sometimes the colour moves into the batik design where the resist has been as well so that makes it quite interesting too so I think that's come up quite well you can see that it's quite different to how it started I'm going to have a little go at this little penguin for you as well to show you because we're going to give him some eyes and so that's just another little way of using the pencils so I've got a little uh, black here so I'm just going to just highlight his little wings flippers whatever it is that those things are that penguins have just to make that a little bit more definite there come back with the water and come back with the iron so it's not a, necessarily a lot of colour that you're trying to put on it's just that you're trying to make it a little bit better so when you've been using a dark colour you may want to just dab that off because you don't want it in your brush the next time you use it most often so what I'm going to do now is give him two eyes so I've got the little black the black pencil again and my water brush here which has got nice wet bristles so in, I, I could just draw them on here and then just dab it with water but it you get a, a nice little effect if you just pop the pencil point into the brush so that it makes it, it wet here so that I can now pop that down here I hope the eyes are in the right place when I'm upside down again I'm going to go back as long as it's been wet it will become permanent so I've got it wet on the pencil and now he's got two little eyes and he's feeling a whole lot happier about life so that he can see what he's doing what that has done the pencil now is fine but it has left a very big black glob in my brush so again back to the tissue 
and squeeze a little bit of water if you're using one of these sort of brushes. You don't need one of these brushes, any paintbrush will do it. These are just very convenient. Um, and I think his beak is looking just a tad um, anemic, so I'm just going to add a little bit of orange back here. Sometimes just the littlest things can make all the difference. Doesn't have to be all over the beak, just a hint of shading to one end can look really nice. So you don't need to heat set particularly. I use the iron more because it it helps it blend in and it helps it dry so that I can move on to another area without um, getting in the way of anything. And so I think you get the hang of that. Maybe I'll just do one more. I'll do this little, this is a potato. How fun is that? The sketches are really just random pictures. They're not anything. They're not following any particular pattern. Um, so I've got a sort of brownie colour here. I'm just going to go around the edges, give it a little bit of definition there. So when you when you're doing something like this, if you're bringing it in from the edges, you want to brush it so that you're drawing that colour in. This isn't going to show a lot because the colour is a lot like what's already there, but it will make a surprising difference just the same. Just gives things a little bit more depth and interest. And if it's not enough, like I said, you can come back and put something else, some more on top afterwards. I think you could use a little bit more. And potatoes are not necessarily evenly coloured. We might pop a little bit of colour throughout. A little bit more blotchy because when I see potatoes they're often a little blotchy. And I just like to dry it as I go. So it's not a heat set, it's a, a drying. So I think you've got the hang of it. The Inktense pencils are very nice, they're very good on fabric. Practice before you do it on something final. You can do lots of things, you can colour blend. And as I said, just the water is enough. The water makes the colours um, tend to bleed or, or travel through the fabric. If you're wanting to, to do something a whole lot more definite, where they're not travelling like that and you really are trying to do more of an actual painting, you may want to look into getting a textile medium or some gel or something like that. Um, for me, with what I'm doing, just the water is enough, but there are other ways of using the ink tents. You don't just have to stop at just a little bit of shading here and there. You can make an amazing masterpiece and I look forward to seeing it. So that was a little bit about the ink tents. They're made by Derwent. It's an um, English company that make pencils, have been making them for a very long time. It's an ink in there so it's permanent when it's wet, or sorry, when it's been wet, when it's gone into the fabric. They're also great on paper of course. They don't have, they're not intended for fabric specifically but because it's ink it will dry into the fabric and multi-purpose, what more could you want? So Go and have a little bit of fun with some ink tents.